Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a gravity vehicle for Science Olympiad using the vehicle I built to win my regional competition. <laughs> Before we continue into the video, please be sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel because I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday that cover topics just like this one here to help you build better devices for all types of science competitions. Also, I'll leave a link in the description below that will take you to a post on my website to help you learn more about Gravity Vehicle. All right guys, before I tell you how exactly my car works, I'm going to give you a quick and brief overview of how I designed my car and what I used to build it. So uh, when I was designing my car, I really wanted it to be a lot longer than it is wide. And that's simply because it makes it a lot more easier to uh, have your car roll down the ramp and makes it more sturdy overall. And I believe the entire length of my car from one end of the wheel to the other end of the wheel is roughly 70 centimeters and the horizontal distance is, uh, is I believe 20 centimeters. Now you may be wondering, well, what are these little metal pieces right here and right here? Well, those two pieces are aluminum L-beams and the reason I use them compared to, to wood or any other metal type material is because aluminum L-beams, especially the thickest I use, which are 1 8 inch, those are pretty sturdy and they're not really going to bend. And they're also pretty lightweight. So that allows you to manip manipulate the center of gravity pretty well. And you can see here, I have this one kilogram block right here. And that's largely possible because the frame of my device is uh, pretty light in comparison to to one kilogram to this one kilogram block. Um, so yeah, I would I would recommend that if you're building a gravity vehicle, you try to use some form of aluminum or metal to build your frame because it helps make your gravity vehicle a lot more sturdier and it's a lot easier to work with. Now for the wheels, you, you may notice there's this little green coating on top of them. And that's because these are from a robotics company called Bainbots. I'll leave a link to their website in, in the description below. And basically these wheels come in specialized hubs and you can put these wheels onto your axles and it's super easy. So I recommend that you use them if you're building a gravity vehicle. Now I only recommend you use these type of wheels if you're building a gravity vehicle only because these wheels are so heavy and you're able to use that weight to your advantage when you're building a gravity vehicle and you really need to maximize your weight. So um, the size wheels I'm using are two, two inches and seven eighths of an inch in diameter, which is roughly 24 inches in circumference or excuse me 24 centimeters of circumference all right guys so you're currently looking at the back of my gravity vehicle and here i just want to point out that the blue pieces you see here and in the front of my vehicle are custom made with a 3d printer and if you have access or your school has access to a 3d printer then i highly recommend you go and design your own parts because it allows you to to have a more personal attachment to your vehicle and it allows you to customize your parts for bearings and your axles and other parts that you want to incorporate in your vehicle like I, like I have here. And here you also see this little black axle and that's a carbon fiber rod. Now you don't have to use a carbon fiber rod when you're building a gravity vehicle. I just chose to because it allows me to make the entire frame and axles of my vehicle a lot lighter and that reduces rotational inertia and allows me to better manipulate the center of gravity of my vehicle. Also, you can see that the wheels are pretty close to the axle and that's because when your vehicle is super heavy, it tends to bend the axles depending on how far away your axles are from the center of the vehicle. So keeping the axles pretty close to the frame allows that axle to stay straight and not bend. All right guys, so you're currently looking at the front of my gravity vehicle 
And here you also see that I have this little blue, ple little blue piece right here, and that's also a custom made piece. And I custom made it to make a little holder for the dowel rod and also to put cu custom made holdings for the bearings I'm using for my vehicle. And now when you're looking at the front compared to the back, you see this gray axle and that axle is actually a threaded rod. And what a threaded rod is, it's basically, you think of it like an extended bolt and you can put nuts on that bolt to like hold different types of things. And if you look more closely at the front of my vehicle, you'll see that there's a little stopping mechanism right here and that includes um, this little spring, a wing nut, a washer, and then two nuts right here. Now, the way this mechanism works is that um, this wing nut is originally back here when it starts in a run. However, as the vehicle keeps on going forward, this wing nut moves from this spot closer and closer towards the spring, pushing this washer. And once this wing nut hits the spring, it begins to become harder and harder for the front wheels of your vehicle to move, and that acts as a decelerator for your car. So if you're already using a wing nut mechanism for your vehicle, then I highly recommend that you try and use some sort of spring decelerator as a quick and easy fix to, to skids on your vehicle. All right guys, so you may be wondering, well, okay, I have the spring mechanism on my car, but how, do I, how exactly do I calibrate it? Well, if you look at my car, you see that I have this little white dial right here. And what that is, is it has tick marks at every 124th of the circle. And that allow, and that's because the circumference of this wheel is 24 centimeters. And then each tick mark of this dial uh, allows me to know when, uh, when this wheel has traveled one centimeter. And that allows me to precisely measure how, how much I, how precisely measure how much I need to rotate this wheel in order to get my car to go a specific distance. Now going about um, trying to calibrate your car to go a specific distance, you can see I have this little uh, double nut placement right there. And I use that as a starting point uh, for my wing nut rather than putting it right where the spring is fully collapsed because the amount that the spring is used on each run is going to be dependent on the speed of your car and the strength of your spring in general. So having that double nut placement and using that as a starting point for your rotations is a lot easier. Now, for, now let's say that um, for Science Olympiad, the maximum distance you need to go is uh, 12 meters or 1200 centimeters. So if you wanna calibrate your car to go 1200 centimeters and it takes and after experiment, experimentation, you found that it takes um, three rotations to three rotations from this spot to go to uh, 1,200 centimeters or 12 meters. Then you would simply rotate this wheel one, two, three, three times, and now you would be able to go 1,200 centimeters. And this is going to be dependent again based on your spring and the location of your starting wing nut. Now, if you want to just use simple math and calculate the distance you want to travel and you're not starting with this type of mechanism and just starting from where this wing nut will always come to a stop, then all you need to do is take the total distance and for example, let's say that's 1200, uh, 1200 centimeters and you divide that by the circumference of the wheel and that's 24 and that will help you find the number of rotations you need to put on this wheel in order to find out how much, how many rotations you need to put on this wheel in order to get to that specified distance. All right guys, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, drop a comment down below telling me what you thought about the video and any other questions you have, and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell because I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday that help you build the best devices for all types of science competitions. And you can follow me on social media, links are on the screen right now. 
and I'll also leave a link in the description below to take you to one of my posts that will help you learn more about gravity vehicle as a whole. And that's all for today guys, stay unfixed.